Let's run it back yet again. Sega Saturn, Symphony of the Night, Randomizer. This time, however, hopefully it doesn't take us two hours to beat the game. That, that's my goal. Hey, anything under two hours will be a personal best for me. <laughs> I removed a handful of the uh, tougher locations and like to get to. So hopefully it means less locations means less backtracking and stuff like that. So we'll see. That's right, everyone in chat is having fun. See, look how much fun they're having. And they're not being forced to have any of that fun. No, no, no. That is voluntary fun that they're having. We're all having voluntary fun over here on the live stream at twitch.tv slash DragonBlitz. If you're watching on DragonBlitz Daily, first of all, uh, subscribe. And second of all, feel free to join the live streams over on twitch.tv slash DragonBlitz. Love to see you in the chat sometime where you too could have fun voluntarily. Have fun. Not a single forced amount of fun happening here. Nope, all voluntary. Damn, Dracula dies. Like, he, he fucking dies in this game, dude. It's crazy. Um. Okay, it looks like... The randomizer settings may not have taken because the map is showing me all of the same locations from last time. So... Hold on. You know... It'll be fine. I'm sure- I'm sure it's fine. Anyways, back to the video game. Oh, we're using Jewel Sword! Heck yeah! You guys want to see something cool about the Jewel Sword? In this game? So, not only does it turn enemies into to gems, but... You can increase the damage by equipping gems. So my attack is going from 35 to 38. Fun. Isn't that fun, everybody? Right? You're having fun? Don't let me point my finger guns again. Everyone in chat is having fun. That's why it's a fun fact. <laughs> Ow. I do like the fact that they decided to upgrade the Jewel Sword in the Saturn version that way. Because the Jewel Sword really does feel not fully... Well, well, well. That does not happen in the PlayStation 1 version, now. In the Saturn version, they upgraded it. There's a couple of things that they decided to upgrade in the Saturn version for whatever reason. And Jewel Sword was one of them. Death Skip? Uh, I'm not aware of any way to do Death Skip in the Saturn version without any additional relics or items, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's uh, take this off, because we don't need it anymore. Let's put on that Marsil and start having some fun. What version is the Xbox? The Xbox version. What the fuck happened there? I like backdash, but the game was like, no? What the fuck? Anyways. Catch me in my Godspeed boots. Would the rando work with the ultimate version of Saturn? I believe so. Yo, we could see the names of the enemies. Poggers. The Xbox version is modeled after the PlayStation 1 version of the game. They're pretty much the same thing. What sword is that? This is the Marcel. It's an explosion sword. It just, you throw the sword, you, you swing it, and it's explosions. Pretty cool if you ask me. Oh shit, we got the double blade axe. I don't remember if that's any good. That menu surely loads in fast. Yep. You know, it has good damage. Fuck it, we do it. Fuck it, we ball. The double axe, blade axe. Oh my god, it's so fucking big! 
Does it have any special attacks? It doesn't look like it. It's so big! Oh my... Alucard, your axe is so big! Aria of Sorrow looking ass weapon. Honestly, you're right. This does feel like an Aria of Sorrow weapon where it's just way too fucking big for no reason. And the hitbox comes out literally frame one. Like the hitbox comes out instantly. Which is interesting. Most weapons don't do that. They usually have like a little bit of a startup. I mean, it's a pretty decent weapon so far. I, I, I'm down to use it. For however long I, I need to. The range on it's insane too. And the swing speed is pretty good. Like I don't see a single flaw with this weapon right now. No, it's two-handed. Sadly. I guess that's the only downside. The Ankh of Life. It looks like he's swinging with one hand. Yeah, but that's every two-handed weapon in this game looks like you're using one hand. What weapon am I using? The d double hand... Double... What chat? What the fuck is it called? Two hand axe blade? Two two blade axe? Something like that. It has a weird name that I I uh, am not remembering, even though I just picked it up two seconds ago. Two blades, one axe. Tonight, two blades, one axe, one. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about the death animation for these fuckers. They just fucking spin and then explode. <laughs> Holy shit. Saturn fanfic weapon. True! <laughs> this game's so fucking silly. Such a silly, silly game. Alright, we got our first Vlad Relic. We're already doing so much better than the last run we did. Let's go. Ow. Bum, 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 bum. Who has the voice credit for that monster? Who knows? They spin into a vortex of nothingness like the dude down in the reverse catacombs. Do you mean the... The, um... What the fuck is his name? Blade armor or whatever? Double bladed axe is the guy she tells you not to worry about. True, actually. Discus Lord, yeah. Are you talking about Discus Lord? Because that guy's in the normal castle. Shit. Damn, this shit two hitting the Diplos? That's pretty good. Kingstone? Well, don't mind if I do. Big discus. Exactly. No worries. You're allowed to forget things. Uh, let's put on that Kingstone, increase our damage a little bit. Alrighty. This is going to be a 20-minute seed? Probably, yeah. We're so close to finishing the game.
Bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. I do honestly just find it interesting using the the boots for movement, just for like platforming and stuff. The prob. 940. Thank you for the uh, sub. Shit looks fluid. I'm... I'm a solid. Sometimes gaseous. I try not to enter the, the, the fluid state of matter very often. Also, if your shit is fluid, you should go to the doctor. Right? You want solid shit. You don't want fluids. You meant the game? Uh, oh! Simply just find the duplicator every time. Turns out it's just that easy. What if it's plasma? I think you should all you should talk to a scientist. If you're shitting hot plasma out of your ass, don't go to a doctor. Go to like a physicist, because that's like. Groundbreaking discovery, right? Again? Same shit. God damn it. Force of Echo was there last time. Aw, oh, man. I do actually want that. Mystic Penance, nice. Uh, I mean, if the game looks smooth, I don't know. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just playing the game on an emulator at 60 FPS. The game runs at 60 FPS. Anyways. Emulated or not. You might just be used to seeing gameplay from people who don't play in 60 FPS. The Saturn version was uh, originally only released in Japan, yes. So the official release Tribute. for the J Saturn version Those is Castlevania souls. Nocturne in the Moonlight. Um, and it was only released in Japan. But I am using a randomizer that does patch in some English translation stuff. Captain Stinky Von Poopberg with the eight months. Appreciate you. Compares to Soten PS1 or Xbox. Uh, they run it. They all run at 60 FPS. All three of, uh, pretty much every version of Symphony of the Night runs at 60 FPS. Sometimes I'll show you when the game doesn't run at 60 FPS. We're actually in a spot where it will uh, slow down. You still own your Saturn copy? Well, don't you feel silly for opening it up? Because if you had a sealed copy, it'd be worth $10 billion. How dare you have fun with the video games that you own? All right. So here, there's going to be enough 3D objects that the game is going to start to lag. That's just, like, what happens. There we go. It's chugging a little bit. Look at the frame rate. Look at the frames. All right, let's get out of here. Now that the game's done lagging, hopefully. Did he drop something? No, he didn't. All right. Uh, Joel of open. The game might just look different to you, and you are... Presuming that that means the game looks more fluid, but the sprites are just going to be a different size. Um, the transparency effects are slightly different. Soul of Bat, let's fucking go! Yes! I'm going to... Oh, mana prism! Infinite mana prisms. I'm a bust. Busting makes me feel good. Uh, can't afford the library card, but we hopefully can find one at some point. Is there anything else worth getting right now? High potion might be worth. Duplicator? Damn, if only... <laughs> chat, if we we could have bought a duplicator. Fuck. Anyways. So sad. Uh, We'll put the high potion here. Sorry, double blade axe, but for now, unfortunately, I think you're going to have to sit in the, the back seat. Sub two hour seat. I hope so. 
If this ain't a sub two hour seat, I'm gonna be upset. This is work. No. Should have figured. All right. Well, now that we can fly and go fast, what do? I've seen people play tabs, uh, but I've never personally played Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. It looks like a neat, fun game to play like one time on stream. Feels kind of like a gimmick game. Or you would have to come up with like specific content ideas around the game, but just playing the game on stream doesn't feel like that good. Fairy card? Did I skip fairy card? Oh shit. Oh, well. We'll go back for it. Hopefully we find a library card. Wasn't referring to streaming. I'm just giving you my perspective. And, you know, that's 99% of what I care about nowadays in a video game is can I stream it? Alrighty, another Vlad Relic. Let's go. And then I just end up streaming Soten for the 10 billionth time. So, you know, does it, does it matter? Does my opinion actually matter? Oh, I'm gonna bust. Bustin. Bustin makes me feel good. Why does he look like that? He looks so fucking creepy. He's just a giant dithered fucking skull. It looks terrifying. Oh my, wait, hold on. What if I... Oh shit. Damn, scan lines. Oh, now we're playing the video game. And by playing the video game, I mean it just looks darker. Let me turn this shit off. Oh, now we're playing the video. Hold up. Wait a minute, guys. Now this is the Soten I remember from my grandma's basement. This shit looked great. He looked double dithered. I'll show you a double dither. Uh, there we go. I have to remember which button is which. Ow. Uh, okay, it's saying I don't have to check here. Ow. Please die. Jesus Christ. Did they nerf the javelins in this game or something? Put the filter back? No. The filter is, um, not for me. I'm not a filter gamer. I just like clean square pixels if I can. I think behind funny walls a check. Uh, I disabled some of the extra Saturn checks to speed things up. The rainbow mantle is a check if you enable it. And I did not enable it this time, because, speaking of, it just took way too long last time with all the extra checks. Missed that? Yeah, no worries. I'd like a buffalo star. That'd be nice. Yeah, the Saturn, like I said, there's a lot of cool things that they changed in the Saturn version. Um, but some of the stuff is definitely not great. 
I understand the sentiment that people have about like a combined version that plays like the PlayStation 1 version, but adds some of the Saturn content back in. Oh my God, it doesn't get much better than this. Is this considered a demake? No, it's just a port. Baby seed, rig seed. Yeah, I guess so. My bad. I'm sorry for rigging the seed. Let me just put on my Chrysogram. My bad. Oh, in my third Vlad relic. Don't mind if I do. God, it's so good. It's so good. You know what, Mojo Mail? Why not? Fuck it. Why not? Let's have some fun. Will I try and beat Jupiter's new time? Yeah. Right now, I am I just have a lot of projects that I'm working on simultaneously, one of which is that Saturn Any% percent, uh, world record. I do want to get back to focusing on that. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take advantage of that world record grind as much as I can because I'm in the process of uploading, a, or not uploading, but I just need to finish the edit, which I'm close to finishing, for a video explaining the route and uploading that, so hopefully that could help uh, push some extra interest into the category, which would be nice for me. So that way, hopefully, it could bol bolster viewership for everybody who's uh, speedrunning Soden, basically. Because it is a really cool storyline, and I would like to get that video out. And I think it would make for a good live experience for a lot of YouTube watchers to watch a video explaining the world record and explaining the route and then watching live streams of people trying to beat that world record. I basically did a very similar thing. Wait, there's no check over here. Nice. I guess I could warp. You know what? Actually, it might even just be worth warping back just for... Just cause. I don't know. Tough to say. What's the best possible time in theory? Well, the task finishes in seven minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, but the task also does a lot of strats that are not RTA viable, so. That number is not known, Fenrir. There's not a human that could give you an accurate estimate there. But I mean, at least for me, I think it would be nice. Uh, I did something similar with the um, luck mode speedrun when I uh, beat the seven minute clock cycle. I uploaded a video and then did more runs of the seven minute uh, luck mode route. And I feel like that was a good thing to do to both have a YouTube upload and like then live streams going over it as well. Have I ever considered speedrunning Hollow Knight? Um, yes, I actually have. I looked into it and this is a video idea that I've been meaning to make for a long time, but um, the reason I don't speedrun Hollow Knight is because the speedrun I wanted to do wasn't a current patch speedrun. And down patching for a speedrun just feels really bad to me personally, because it goes against a lot of the philosophy that I personally have when it comes to speedruns, which is the factor of doing a run such that anybody who also owns the game can do the same run. But once you're down patching, you're getting into this weird gray area of like, oh yeah, this run exists, but you have to get like what is now a no longer supported version of the game kind of deal. So in order to do like a speed run of Hollow Knight, you'd have to down patch really. Like you can do current patch speed runs. I'm sure they're fine. But most of the speedrun tech was taken out. So. Same thing kind of happened with Elden Ring. Like Elden Ring. Down patching to speedrun that game really turned me off. Because I was learning the speedrun for Elden Ring. And then they started patching stuff. 
And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and play on like a down patch version of the game, so I just am going to give up. I do think that patch culture in modern video games has hurt the speedrunning community a lot. Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom is another great example of that, where um, the game will be at its fastest on version 1.0 or whatever, 1.1, which is no longer an official version. So because of that, it's like really hard to be like, it, it kills a lot of the hype for me. When you can't just point at a run and be like, you can do this at home, because you, you can't. You have to get an unofficial version of the game. So it's like, you know, just not very fun. Because to me, the reason I got into speedrunning in the first place is because I watched people play through video games that I liked, saw them do glitches, and I was like, dude, I want to do that. I want to be able to break the game the, the way these speedrunners are. And if you just can't do that, um, yeah, I'll grab the warp. And if you can't do that, it takes away a lot of the enjoyment in speedrunning for me. You can get Tears of the Kingdom 1.0 with a physical copy. Yes, but like that means you have to have a very specific switch set aside and then never connect that switch to the internet. It, like it's already making it harder than it needs to be. And most people will update their game. 99% of people are going to play on the most updated version of the game. Like, yes, it's technically available, but it doesn't mean... Oh my god, another Vlad Relic. It doesn't mean that most people are going to have access to it. Does that make sense? Uh... This is awkward. So for that reason, I usually wait for a game to no longer be being patched and hope that the current patch speedrun is fun. Like, for example, uh, the exact type of game, same type of game as uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, speedruns are done on the current patch of the game. And those speedruns are just as glitchy and tech uh, uh, technical So it ends up being, like, fun, because you could just pick up the game and play the game. Like, I played using my version of uh, Breath of the Wild when I was learning the speedrun for that game, for the uh, video that I did on it. And that was a good time. It's one of the other reasons why I don't like when speedrunning communities will do, like, mods as well. Where it's like, hey, you have to play a modded version of the game if you want to speedrun it, because the community runs like a, a a patch that you know is a quality of life thing, which is good. I think having quality of life things are good most of the time, but when you make a difference between somebody picking up the game and playing and what the speedrunning community does, I think you hurt a lot of the heart of what makes speedrunning interesting for, like, the average person, which is them watching a speedrun and being like, oh my god, I want to be able to do that. Yeah, I don't mind watching the speedruns, but I, knowing that the, the speedrun is out of my personal reach without getting, like, a specific copy or down patching or whatever, like, that shit, I'm just like, all right. I'm never going to do this speedrun because I don't want to have to bother figuring out which version of the game I have to down patch to for the, the correct speedrun version or like, oh, I have to download the, the unofficial speedrun patch of the game so that way the game runs at the right frame rate or whatever. Like that, that kind of stuff really does turn me off to learning a speedrun personally. Not to say that, like, you're wrong for enjoying those kinds of speedruns. In fact, there are probably really good games that are locked behind those types of uh, stipulations, which is unfortunate. But for me, it just is a turnoff. Although I don't feel the same when it comes to um, removing, like, intro skip in Ocarina of Time or, like, um, cutscene skips in... Uh, uh, Super Mario Sunshine. I feel like that stuff is fine because all you're doing is removing cutscenes that have no gameplay. And then the 
time comparison adjusts for that. So someone at home could still just boot up their own version of the game and have fun with it. But they just have to sit through extra cutscenes where like the speedrunning community has found ways to get around those cutscenes um, through mods, but that's the only thing. And I think that's fine. I think that's a fine enough thing. That doesn't bother me. Or yeah, low time removal in PC games. I think that's fine. Skill of Wolf, nice. But I think the longer or the, the farther people stray from speedrunning a game in a fashion that is congruent with simply playing the game, but fast, I think it turns off a lot of people. I think it's one of the reasons why speedruns aren't quote unquote like special anymore for a lot of people. Nice. This is actually really good. I think a lot of people just don't care about speedrunning anymore is because the games that are being speedran oftentimes uh, get broken to a certain degree that people don't want to watch anymore. Like, imagine if the speedrunning community for Symphony of the Night just stuck to arbitrary code execution. I don't think this game would have ever maintained any player base. If the main leaderboard category was arbitrary code execution, people would be like, I'm not playing that shit. I think it's something that also unfortunately happened to Ocarina of Time is that the game slowly became way too uh, distant from something that an average person could watch and understand. Because obviously people aren't doing Ace as like the primary speedrun category necessarily, but even like the modern runs of Ocarina of Time oftentimes revolve around SRM or like other very tough to understand glitches. Essentially, if you need a bachelor's in computer science to understand the speedrun route, your speedrun is not gonna appeal to like a wide audience, basically. Like you need something that can be easily explained or even just like visually understood, right? I think it's one of the reasons why Mario 64 continues to be the GOAT of speedrun um, viewership to this day. It, or like Minecraft, for example. Like Minecraft doesn't hurt. Well, I think the thing that started to hurt Minecraft is that they started using external tools and they started doing stuff that the average viewer couldn't like percept, like couldn't use their own perception to understand. What is a pencil board? Uh, I don't know. It basically does nothing. But Minecraft was at its peak when it was people just doing random seeds and not uh, abusing load times, not abusing the pause menu, not abusing the F3 menu. That was when Minecraft was at its peak, speedrun wise. Use it, you can't. It's an item that cannot be used. Is this nothing or is this actually holy glasses? This might actually just be holy glasses. Also, you can't skip this cutscene? Since when? That's interesting. I didn't know you can't skip this cutscene. Long story short, as much as I like to disagree with the glitches equal cheating crowd, um, I think there is a valid opinion in there where if the glitches are so absurd and take away and take you like out of the gameplay uh, from a viewing experience, I can understand why a viewer would choose not to watch those kinds of speedruns. Can you die, please? Jesus Christ. I don't remember how I'm supposed to deal with her when she's doing this shit. I guess she just stops being invincible eventually and then you get to win. I feel like this is something I should know. Uh, 
I have a very accepting and inviting mindset. Well, I, I just have to think about this stuff a lot, or I choose to think about this stuff a lot because it's part of my job, is understanding what part of speedrunning are... Oh. Oops. I was pressing all the buttons and the start button, and that's how you reset the game. <laughs> Thoughts on Wind Waker speedruns? I honestly haven't watched a Wind Waker speedrun in a long time. So I don't know if I could... Uh... You know what? Actually, it was planned because I didn't check this relic location. Damn it. <laughs> it, was a, it was a save split, guys. <laughs> I didn't even get to see if uh, that was the Holy Glasses. I'm so dumb. But yeah, I haven't seen a Wind Waker speedrun in a long time. Um... I know Wind Waker had a lot of hype around it with Wind Waker HD when they were able to do barrier skip for the first time. I also think it's there is a lifespan for all games as they like peak in interest and then eventually fall off. Um, and then new discoveries will help peak the interest again, but eventually even then they'll fall off. And I think some games are just really good at riding out their peaks compared to others. It also helps if your game is just like a, um, like an institution in gaming, like Mario 64. Yeah, the cape is RGB. That's just in the game. All right, we're going to figure out how the frick this boss fight works again. What is the complexity on this? I have it set to seven. I think Symphony of the Night is at a decent spot with its speed runs, but I do think that we do lose a lot of people with uh, some of the glitches, but also Symphony of the Night is kind of known for its glitches, so it's in a weird spot. And I think there is a subset of people that are fine with the game being a little glitchy, but also I think the randomizer has helped invigorate a lot of people in understanding the game because the randomizer has played glitchless for the most part. I did it again! I'm gonna shit! Why do I keep doing it? I'm trying to, ah! You know what? It's not holy glasses. It's not, it's simply just nothing. It's simply nothing. It's probably holy glasses. It might be Spike Breaker, actually, now that I think about it. It might just be Spike Breaker, because it could be any item, I assume. Dude, I'm just used to mashing buttons when I'm, like, in a cutscene. Oh, my God. I avoided your channel for a while because I thought it was more of that style of speedrunning. Really, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. I wonder where you saw the video of, of them glitching the game with the inventory. Was it just the world record explained video of the... Because I think there was a world record commentary that Narcissa did back in the day. Must have been that. Because I don't think anybody else made videos about it. Wait, I do have Spike Breaker already? All right, then that means it's guaranteed to be holy glasses or nothing. So I just need to fucking stop mashing buttons and just 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 kill Maria. I just can't handle that I have to kill Maria. Let's do that until we hit the two hour mark. True, actually. It was some random YouTube video. I just have a hard time thinking of anybody who has talked about arbitrary code execution ever with Symphony of the Night. Other than Narcissa, who did the run. If I do it a fourth time, just start a new seed? Yeah, I should. I should just give up. All right, if this isn't Holy Glasses, I'm going to shit. Also, why isn't this cutscene skippable? Every other cutscene in the game is skippable, and they just forgot to let this one be skippable for some reason? So stupid. Imagine it's nothing. I will be a little upset. I'm not going to lie. 
I wish Ace was cooler than it is. I think the concept of Ace existing in your game is cool, but it's a novelty. Like, understanding that it is a novelty that most people will be turned off from, like, watching multiple Ace runs. Like, nobody wants to see you grind out the Ace speedrun, really. There we go. So I think you just have to wait for her to become vulnerable. Something like that. Yeah, the run itself isn't interesting. I think the run itself can be interesting, but because it rewards a different style of gameplay that most people aren't interested in, it ends up falling off pretty hard. Like Mario's ace category that is like less than a minute long, I think is something that more people are interested in because you are playing the game. It's just you're playing it in a really weird way. Same for Mario 3. Their credits warp is also ace. It was nothing! No, no fucking shot, dude. Wait. Ah! I can't believe it. I'm gonna shit. <laughs> it was fucking sunglasses. It was the wrong glasses, Maria. Wrong glasses. God damn it. Oh well. But I also am in agreement with the crowd of people that are like, yeah, I don't like arbitrary code execution runs. Because there's a reason I don't do arbitrary code execution runs. I. I just don't think it's that interesting, personally. I also don't go out of my way to watch those kinds of runs, but, you know. So I think you're at your best as a speedrun for general um, appeal when you are essentially just playing the game fast and doing impressive movement. Things that you can just look at with your eyeballs and be like, that is impressive. I find that movement to be impressive and you don't need to explain it to me. I think Mario is a great example of that because Mario's entire gameplay premise is Wahoo! Yippee! Waha! So any, you know, Joe Schmo or Grandma can watch the run and just be like, hey, Mario go Wahoo! And then he goes wah, 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 Wahoo! And he goes up the stairs and it's fun. I think Sotens is fine because there's still gameplay around it. That is true, Turbo, yeah. I respect Ace as well. I think I think it's a, a cool thing that exists in this video game, and I'm happy it exists, but I personally would not go out of my way to learn the category. Yeah, and then he says, so long, gay Bowser, and everyone's like, so true. Actually, wait, if I was Mario in this scenario, I too would tell gay Bowser so long. Can I? How do I do this again? There we go. My hands just fumble sometimes. So I think if you look at every game that's considered a popular speedrun, you will find that um, the game itself usually mirrors casual gameplay, but just but faster. More often than not. Is there going to be another Mega Man ZX video? Oh, no. I had fun playing the games, but I didn't want to finish it. The game wasn't so compelling that I felt like I needed to finish it, but I enjoyed what I played of it. I enjoyed it enough to know that I was done with it. Felt hat. I'll feel your hat. Have I looked into 30XX? That looks like a cool game. And I'm sure it's fine. I felt that.
The run needs to be comprehensible to feel approachable. Exactly. What a good way to put it. Because I do think that the uh, the core of what makes speedrunning interesting is the ability to look at something and be like, oh my god, I can understand what's going on. And on top of that, I can kind of like relate. Or even better, I want to be able to do that, right? You see Mario go wahoo up the stairs and you're like, I want to be able to do that. It's, it's comprehensible and intriguing to look at and asks the person watching, like, don't you want to learn how to Wahoo? Because that's how you get an influx of new speedrunners over time and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think there, I don't think there's enough interest for a task bot showcase of Ace ever because that would require people to be messing around with Ace in Soten, which nobody does. The one, the one person who messes around with Ace and Soden, uh, I don't think would put on a, a showcase like that. When I did commentary for lesser known glitchy games, I tried to make it a point to explain why a skip works and how much was being skipped. Yeah, exactly. Because you need, you need a reference as an audience member to know like what the what like why is what they're doing important or interesting you know like why is it a big deal that mario go wahoo up the stairs it does help when your game is also just well known so the the rules of the game are just understood generally mario is a great example most people know how mario works you collect the stars the stars let you go to new places Very few people understand how cool uh, Lords of Shadowrun is. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't help that most people either don't understand or don't remember the structure of the game. So when you do a big skip, like you have to explain like, no, that's a big ass skip. You guys don't get it. Where in a more popular game that is more fondly remembered or well known, you don't have to fight for that, like explaining that part. Have I played Soldiers? I don't know if I have. It sounds familiar, but I don't I don't believe I have. Did I open the switch? I did not. Joel Joldiers? Jesus. Chat, you're big brain. Too too large. I also feel like general audiences may have received a little bit of glitch fatigue because a lot of games in the last like four or five years have found their holy grail speedrunning tricks or glitches. So unless you're like super interested in that game in particular, I feel like most people will be like, eh, I don't really care that arbitrary code execution exists in Zelda now. I don't really care that you can moon warp in uh, Majora's Mask. Unless you are a huge fan of Majora's Mask, specifically Majora's Mask speedrunning. I also feel like a lot of people lost, not lost, but the, like the magic of speedrunning wore off because they oversaturated themselves with it. Because over time, that's just a thing that can happen. Like you just are like, you understand the tropes, the, the expectation is different now that you've understood the hobby a little bit more. It's one of the things that I noticed myself doing with blindfolded speedruns is I kind of was like, okay, I get it. You do normalized setups and you listen to audio cues to determine where you are in the game. And it kind of turned me off from like the impressive feat that happens with blindfolded speedruns. Uh, I eventually got over that, especially after trying the little bit of Soten blindfolded that I did. I have a much different respect for it now. But I too was susceptible to falling into the trap of like, oh, you know, Yada, 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 blindfolded this, blindfolded that. And I imagine on a macro scale, people could just do that with speedrunning in general. Like, oh, they're just skipping the game. They're doing glitches to skip the game. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, it's kind of like once you know how the magic trick is performed, you kind of, you know, are less interested in the magic trick. 
Blindfolded drums with a dog doing inputs is the future. You're actually correct. That's going to be the next major GDQ run, for sure. Wow, I can see in the dark, kind of. Damn, this shit does not look good. Why is it lagging? What? The Saturn version sure is something. I don't need that. Alucard Spear and the Double Blade Axe. Yo, that's kind of hype. I just hope that PS3 and 360 emulation gets to the point where I can break down a couple of skips. That'd be cool. I know Xbox 360 emulation is getting better. And PS3 emulation is also getting better. I just don't know if Lords of Shadow is like a game that they're trying to make uh, compatible, you know? Because that's basically the, the deep, dirty secret of emulation is that emulation gets more and more compatible based off of just popular games and people working on making those popular games work. Until eventually, you know, you just have an emulator that just works. Dude, there's no way that the only thing I'm missing right now is fairy scroll or fairy card. Because we skipped fairy card at the beginning on accident. There's no way that fairy card is my progression that I actually need. It has to be here, right? This is the only other thing we haven't checked. That's considered a relic, I believe. According to my tracker, this is the only thing I'm, I'm missing. What's lacking in RPCS3? It's just a uh, compatibility. Like certain emulators won't be accurate enough or compatible entirely with games. Like games can like crash because things will happen in the game that the emulator is not prepared for. So then it requires a, the team that is making the emulator to patch the emulator to make sure that that specific game works. And you just do that over and over and over and over until eventually the emulator is like 100% compatible. That's just how emulation has always been. Oh, dude. I still don't have a library card, do I? Where's my li library card? No! Why don't I have one? Two seeds, no library cards. And on top of that, I have to go back to the library because it's probably going to be freaking Form of Mist or whatever. That or it's just Holy Glasses there, which would be very funny. That or the randomizer is broken? This version looks great. Don't let it deceive you. It is interesting, to say the least. I'll give you interesting. Great. I draw the line there. You like the inventory here more than others? What does that mean? You mean opening the inventory? Because that shit takes 12 years. If you mean the Saturn exclusive items, then yeah, that's fine. The Saturn exclusive items are cool. I'll admit that the Saturn exclusive items are cool. Well, we wasted so much time exploring the castle when in fact all we needed to do was get Soul of Bat, which we did in the first like 10 minutes of the game, and then check Fairy Card, which we could have done in the first 11 minutes of the game. Instead, it's an hour later. The seat's still going. Yes! I want it to be over too. I want to go fast. But I'm getting kind of owned. Sometimes you just get owned, and that's okay. This is all my fault. I literally just skipped this when I could have checked it at the very start. 
Yeah, we're hunting for the for the bone. Here we are. And it's holy glasses. Of course. Of course. Whatever. So it looks like we have two relic locations available or two, yeah, two things we can get baited by. It's either mist leads to the final Vlad relic or merman statue leads to the final Vlad relic because we've checked everything else. And the last things are either, yeah, mist guarded or merman guarded. Although, wait, the minimum complexity is seven. That doesn't seem possible. How is the minimum complexity seven if we already have all this stuff? Uh, forgot to guy a library card. True! We could have guyed a library card. Fuck. Shit. You're actually correct. Damn it. Unless maybe we get something here. Another duplicator. Fun. There's no reason to double duplicate. So I'm starting to think that maybe the complexity doesn't work properly in this randomizer, because, like, layer zero was Soul of Bat, layer two was Holy Glasses, and we've gotten everything with just those two, basically. And the only things that are left is Mist and Merman for additional progression. Oh. Huh. Well, there's Power of Wolf, I guess. That's cool. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Library card. Fuck. I was hoping. No gravity boots either, which is not ideal. That cup sounds empty. It is empty, sadly. I thirst. Watch, this is just gonna be like the freaking relic right here somehow. Well, it's a relic. We'll pick it up for funsies. Saturn and Soden feels like Soden from an alternate timeline. Yeah. Damn it. Did I not? I didn't. I'm going to grab this in case I need it. I might need it. You guys think Creature's gonna have a Vlad Relic again? You guys wanna gamble on it? Here, let's let's do a quick prediction. I love how I can fly hands-free. There we go. We'll just gamble again. Does Creature have value? Why not? The odds are not high, but why not? All in, all in on fake money. 
I probably don't need to do the... Well, doesn't really matter because I have to load the game anyways. Well, you know... This does make things a little interesting. I think I need to go back. Maybe I save split right here. I think I need to take the risk of... Uh, since we're only missing one Vlad Relic, and this unlocks two Relic checks, we can do a save split here and then go back to the first castle. Can I undo my vote? Nope. Smiley face. I mean, creature could just have the last Vlad Relic, or it could be Mermaid Statue there. Because, I mean, minimum complexity was supposed to be seven for this seed, but that's impossible, so I think the complexity is just broken. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Why did people start voting yes after Miss got picked up? Because they believe. Some people, hey, some they just believe. You just gotta believe. Creature has value in memory, pay out yes immediately or be reported. <laughs> Interesting. So the... Because the spike breaker was still there. So it seems like any of the progression items will infinitely respawn. Not that it really matters, but that's interesting. So even if you already fight Minotaur and Werewolf... You still have this cutscene? Because that's not how it works on the PlayStation version. We killed Minotaur Werewolf in this run. And this cutscene still plays out. Very interesting. I mean, last seed, the odds were heavily against Creature being value, but Creature was still value, so, you know. Thank you for the good luck. The extra delay. But we got the 69. Ideal. Let's see it. Oh, it's just an Asafune. Why does the sound cut out here? So strange. Uh, did we open the shortcut? I don't think so, right? Man. This is awkward. Probably is the incorrect audio flag. Yeah, probably. Oh, come on. I love me some downward wing smashes, though. Yeah, I guess just the cutscene's just bugged. Whatever. Heaven Sword drop? Don't worry about it. Now, if I had a second Heaven Sword, we'd be in business. I just, I guess I'm just going the long way around. Like, what else am I going to do? I guess I could warp from entrance. It just feels like getting to the library without a library card here just sucks. Do, 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 do. Business. 
The loop of shame. No, don't call it that. Not the loop of shame. If only... Like, the underground garden looped into the... bottom of the... outer wall. That'd be sick. That'd be cool. No, don't bonk. On the bright side, infinite wing smash does make things a little bit nicer here. I assume there weren't viable library cards. About that. Would you believe me if I said no? Well, you shouldn't, because there were. I just forgot to buy them. In my defense, they were expensive. And I'm stupid. Those are my those are my two defenses, and I'm sticking to it. They were expensive, and I'm stupid. So, you know. What do you say to that, uh, atheists? Now, understandable. Have a nice day. Dude, the transformations taking longer is crazy. Also, that explosion does look kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. That's it, definitely a different explosion. Uh, sa uh, as uh, effect than in the PlayStation version. Oh! Get fucked! Creature has value? No! Get out of here! Nobody likes Creature. Boners! This is your chance! Also, left siders in shambles. Boners tonight, we rise. Creature is the millhouse of so. Ah, <laughs> uh, so true. I want to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride. No, you're gonna ride the boner, and you're gonna like it. Uh, maybe I pause. <laughs> he even wears flood pants. Damn, actually, hold up. Congrats on my one hour PB. Thanks. Yeah, all it took was um, getting a little bit luckier. To be fair, we could have finished the seed in like 30 minutes if I just didn't forget to check. Dude, you can't miss that in this stupid fucking game. Yeah, the seed could have been over in 30 minutes if I just wasn't dumb. And didn't forget to check uh, the ferry location. All right, let's have some fun. <laughs> Wee! McDonald's, uh, Kate. Goofy, uh. I'm not cheating! Would a cheater do this? Hmm? Hmm? 
I don't know. Would a cheater do this? Explain that. Yes? Wait, whoa, whoa. Wait, what? They would? Are they gonna cheat? Wait, really? Oh, no! Oh, fuck me. I will say, not having gravity boots in the Saturn version kind of sucks. And not having access to the, um... I could do... Yeah, I'm not going to do the out-of-bounds because I don't have gravity boots. Yeah, not having power of mist either is, uh... Not good. Oh, God! The load. Sometimes the game's got to load. Maybe creature has gravity boots, so he has value after all. Well, we're never going to find out. Oh, fuck off. You're supposed to damage boost me the other way. Can't believe streamer would throw like this. Yep, invalid run. Did did a singular glitch, you're going to jail. Dude, those front slides are so hard. If you were a throwable, which throwable would you be and why is it a peanut? Why would you clock me like that? Can't believe you would clock me as a peanut and be so accurate. Is that a setup, perhaps? Not that I need a setup, but... Nice. Let's have some fun. What's something fun we could use to kill Dracula with? We could do... Alucard Spear? That'd be fun. Just go full damage. I don't think we yeah, screw it. Why not? Kill him with the pencil thing? You can't use it. There's no item. There's no way to use it. Do I have any vials? I don't think I do. At least I don't remember picking any up. Because vial stacking does still work, yeah. Dude, because you know what's sad? I was looking into doing vial stacking in any percent to skip the Masamune, but there's no uh, way to get a bomb drop that's meaningful. If you can get like two uh, Power of Sires or something like that, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Dude, the Alucard Spear is not that great. I mean, it's good. Alucard does not know how to use a spear. It's his spear. It's got his name on it. Also, did you know you have control while the game is fading out like that? Like I was able to move around his Alucard before it loaded me into this boss fight. Turns out I was Alucard the whole time. Damn. Damn, I'm getting owned. Hold up. Uh, let's let's finish him off. Oh, I do have a monster vial. Uh, do I have a anything fun to use it with? No. 
All right, we'll have in sword to finish him off then. There it is. Time. Something fun you could also do, by the way, is you could open the menu after killing Dracula. He's dead, but you could still open the menu. And I think you have control for a little while. Yeah, like that. GG's. That was fun. A lot faster this time. PB by f like 50 set or 50 minutes. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you library a card out then? Yeah, you should be able to. For sure. I'm pretty sure you can. Anyways, uh, hey, if you're watching on Dragon Blitz Daily, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Join the live streams over on twitch.tv slash Dragon Blitz. I'd love to see you in the chat. Um, and whatever you do, don't, don't poop yourself.